Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to another video. Today we have over here some Magic the Gathering. So this is something that uh, you guys might have already known that I have been getting into Magic the Gathering a lot more. At least for the time being, I'm focusing more on Commander as opposed to Standard just because I feel like Commander being an Eternal format, it's just something that's easier to get into. You don't always have to update your deck. I mean, once in a while when a new set comes out, there are new cards that you will actually want to get to upgrade your deck, but overall you don't actually have to get them, and because of that, you it's more ideal for someone who just doesn't have as much time to get into, which is what makes Commander such an amazing format for what it is. Whereas opposed to Standard, you always have to keep worrying about the newest sets that comes out and you also have to get 4 copies of every single card you need as opposed to just 1 copy which is what Commander uh, works upon. But with that being said, we do have a Commander deck today. Now this is not the uh, usual one we see here. This is for the set Coldheim which is already a very old set. Um, but even so, this is still fantastic. Now, the difference between this particular commander deck and a lot of the other usual commander decks that we get is that it's half the price, but you are getting potentially more value for the cards here than an actual commander deck. So that's definitely fantastic. It was kind of uh, Wizards of the Coast's... Um, their kind of take on a budget commander deck it's significantly cheaper you essentially can buy two for less than the price of one of the regular ones uh, but this was kind of something that they only tried out for a few sets i believe only three sets uh commander legends battles of zendika and uh, coldheim um, but yeah the best ones is arguably the Kaldheim ones because Battle of Zendikar was when they released as kind of like the first trial of it and I think a lot of people just weren't as happy with it and this one was the one where they really improved on it whereas the one that came after Commander's Legends uh, that one also didn't turn out too well so the success of it came really from this one and I do have both of them but just for today we're going to be opening up uh, this one over here which is uh, focusing on black and green which is definitely my favorite uh, combination to actually play together uh, so yeah with that being said let's just open up this and see what is inside because obviously with myself being uh, kind of new to magic I I'm really keen to just know what actually comes in each of these particular products. Uh, definitely really interesting to see. So, let's try and get everything outside. Obviously, this is going to be weird. Um, I see a lot of stuff inside here. So, firstly, let's grab out what's in the bottom. This looks like a deck box that we're going to be building. Nice. So, they actually keep it in here. This hollow compartments but yeah this is essentially what we get you know this is just fantastic i mean yes even though this is a cardboard box it's actually a very well designed uh deck box so we can just do this to take out this of course and all you have to do is just fold the cardboard in like that and it kind of like snaps into place even you know like this is great and it will eventually flatten out over time but that's what you see here and then you can just fold this up like so fold these up like this as well and you can just put this in and not only will this fit your commander deck which is 100 cards by the way but uh, you could actually sleeve up the decks as well and then put it in here and it would still fit so very well done uh, definitely fantastic even if you don't play it anymore you could actually just uh, display this on a shelf it looks really good and that's one of the things that I'm always impressed by with magic they have uh, fantastic artwork so I'll put that over there on the side um, we also have this here which is kind of like a learn to play which is fantastic of course but uh, we don't have to worry about that too much, so we just set that aside as well. And we have over here our damage counter, which is fantastic. We could just put that in the deck box as well. It's the size of a card. And we get to see our, our life, you know, which is interesting. You know, the other side as well. Uh, yeah, 
very well designed, just fantastic piece to actually have here. So let's get out what's the rest of this. There we are. So, oh, just lift that out, it's really easy. We have our main card over here, which is a Lathril Blade of the Elves. A fantastic card with menace. Um, yeah, just an absolute beauty. Yeah, very fantastic. This is essentially our commander for this particular deck, and you do want to have something that is uh, relatively low cost as well. So, uh, yeah, quite a fantastic choice here. But with that being said, here is the deck itself, 100 cards, and I think there is nothing else inside, so we can just throw away all the cardboard. But yeah, very excited here to see, so I'm just going to look for some sort, of, uh, some sort of marker which allows us to open this up. There we are. And we'll see what's actually inside here, but uh, you know, let me know what you guys actually think about this particular commander deck. Do you actually think it's good um, compared to the usual commander decks that we get? Because uh, at least for me, I feel like it's quite uh, a lot of value to be honest. And as someone who's just getting into the game, I don't have a lot of the staples. So I do think that uh, commander decks you know, with what they provide, it's definitely quite nice and budget friendly for us. But let's begin here. We have Pact of the Serpent, Ruthless Winnower, Serpent Soldier, Bounty of Skemfar, Canopy Tactician, Crown of Skemfar, Wolverine Riders, Elder Fang Venom, Beast Whisperer, Cultivator of Blades, uh, Dwinen, Guilt Leaf Dean, or Dane. Elvish Arc Druid, uh, End Rays Forerunners, Harvest Season. So we're getting a lot of like elves, and uh, we're also getting uh, kind of like these beasts. So like elves being able to control beasts of sorts. Uh, Imperious Perfect. We have Marwin the Nurturer, Master Myras, Marise the Exiled, uh, Voice of the Woods, Casualties of War, Ambitions Cost, I Blight. Colors, I Blight Massacre, Liz Alana Scarblade, very nice. We have Miara, Thorn of the Blade, Pride of the Perfect, uh, Prowess of the Fair, Elvish Mystic, Elvish Promenade, Elvish Rejuvenator, Farhaven, Elf, Jagged Scars, Archers, uh, Lanoa Tribe, we have Liz Alana Huntmaster, Nelmaid Shepherd, Numa uh, Jorogar Chieftain, uh, Reclamation Sage, Spring Bloom Druid, Sylvan Messenger, Timber Watch Elf, which that's just an amazing piece of artwork. I mean, I'm always impressed by the artwork of Magic. Uh, Voice of Many, uh, Wire Wood Channeler, Wood Elves, Abomination of Lenoir, uh, Golgari Finebroker, Mulder Vein Reclamation, Poison Tip Archer, Putrefy, Shaman of the Park, Twin Blade Assassins, Arcane Signet, Soul Ring, a fantastic card. I do know that this is really good. Command Tower with a Foul Orchid, Golgari Guildgate, fantastic. Golgari Rot Farm, Jungle Hollow, Myriad Landscape, Path of Ancestry, and a bunch of Swamp cards here, as well as a bunch of Forest cards, which allows us to actually utilize cards. Um, you know, play our cards out. So when Elder Fang, uh, we have here. Elder Fang Ritualist, uh, Poison of the Cup, Poison the Cup, uh, Return Upon the Tide, Skemfar Shadow Shade, uh, Turgrid Shadow, Elven Ambush, Jespero Sentinel, Roots of Wisdom, and we have um, some really interesting cards. I believe this is, is this double sided? Um, let me just set that aside here. No, it isn't. Like, I'm just wondering because um, I have been noticing like some different changes to the games um yeah so we have some tokens as well over here which is uh, quite fantastic but uh no with this year pretty much tells you how a turn works as well so that's great uh different like formats you can play and obviously this one being commander uh so yeah this is just um quite fantastic i absolutely 
am loving this. I'm very excited to try this out. I think uh, when you buy a new commander deck, I think the best thing is to try it out first, play it at least for uh, one or two rounds, and if you have the need to change it up, then you know, you can always change it up, but uh, usually when you play it the first few times, you just want to get the feel of the actual deck itself, and surprisingly, uh, it could be actually uh, quite well constructed, you know, and uh, that's kind of uh, the thing I've been actually experiencing with the Vampiric Bloodline, which was the Crimson Vow Commander deck, which I bought uh, quite a while back, and I opened that, had a chance to play with it, and uh, got a feel for the deck itself, uh, definitely quite fun, so... Uh, right now I'm just in the early stages of magic itself, haven't fully delved into it, so everything is just uh, all new to me, it's all really fun. Um, I am keen to hear what you guys have for recommendations for every single product that's actually out there at the moment, so definitely please let me know, um, is any of the new sets actually worth getting? and everything like so. I am particularly interested in Commander, and yeah, this is just essentially uh, what I'm going at right now. My goal is currently just to buy whatever Commander decks are available out there, and eventually I'll accumulate enough cards that I have all the essential staples that would allow me to build any Commander deck freely. Uh, when I want to, but for the time being, I'm just focusing on pre-built ones, uh, just because it's a great way to learn the game itself and improve upon that. Uh, so yeah, definitely leave me your thoughts. With that being said, I'll see you in the next video.